Hi, this is John Kanellopoulos again from our office here in Athens, Greece. I want to share a very interesting case with you. This is a um, young gentleman. He is 35 years old. He carries the diagnosis of keratoconus. And we're going to go and look at the images. These are the, um, the slit lamp pictures of uh, this quote-unquote keratoconic patient. And here things are starting to get funny because you can see here, even on slit lamp, that the thinning is mainly in the very inferior cornea here and in the left eye here. So just simple, careful slit lamp by microscopy is able to steer us to the right condition. I know I advocate a lot of times that it, that not every, not every claw-like astigmatism on topography is pellucid, but this is probably a case that it is. You can see claw-like astigmatism here. And again, the sine qua non, in my opinion, that this is pellucid marginal degeneration, not keratoconus, is that the thinnest part of the cornea is this broad area near the inferior limbus. So this is pellucid and not a claw-like uh, astigmatism on pentacam that has uh, a round thin area somewhere off the center of the cornea. So we're gonna look more images with the very advanced imaging that we have available today. This is the left eye. The claw-like is kind of lost here because the astigmatism is very high. But again, we can see that the extreme cornea periphery, remember the pentacam only catches nine millimeters and here the patient is looking upwards. The pupillary um, uh, reticule is displaced superiorly. So we're looking around 10 millimeter diameter here. See how thin the, uh, the cornea is at uh, this area. And uh, we're gonna go to uh, uh, the uh, fundus view, of course, as with every patient, uh, very normal fundus. So uh, we feel that this patient would certainly benefit from uh, cornea cross-linking, but the, the task here is that we need to cross-link this uh, very peripheral cornea and not the central cornea. So we're gonna use the, um, um, the uh, vidro mosaic device to design a broad area of cross-linking here deliver a lot of energy in order to penetrate the cornea here. And yes, this could be combined with a topography guider or even a, a wafer optimized because centrally the astigmatism is very regular to improve uh, visual function with this patient. Remember, uh, in this patient, uh, as with pellucid, central cornea is, is of good thickness. We are at uh, over 500 in central cornea thickness where the uh, uh, area in question, the hard area in question, has a minimal cornea thickness of uh, under 390 uh, microns. Um, and uh, this is the reason that, in my opinion, a penetrating graft here offers no benefit to the patient because we will remove the central healthy part of the cornea and not the diseased part of the cornea. We've also described cases where uh, no other uh, interventions such as cross-linking, even eccentric cross-linking will help uh, uh, to perform a lamellar, uh, uh, lunar, if you mean, graft here to reinforce the thin peripheral cornea with cross-linking and then address the refractive error with contact lenses or a laser procedure. So um, I, uh, I thought I'd share this very interesting case uh, with you again. Uh, crazy numbers on the IHD 182 and 308 in the two eyes. But what's most impressive in the topometric indices are the ISVs 294. I've never seen a number this high and 246 between the two eyes. Uh, and again, this is, uh, in my opinion, a classic mislabeled um, four keratoconus, in essence, pellucid marginal degeneration and the treatment options uh, are mentioned uh, before. This is John, John Kanellopoulos uh, from our Athens office. Uh, thanks so much for watching this. Signing out.